Hey, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Glad to be with you. It is 52 minutes after the hour. Brian Hansen is engineering, pushing the buttons, making it happen. I'm in here spreading germs, passing along colds. Well, you have the Lysol in like... there as well, so spray after you finish, please. Where's the Lysol? Is it gone? There's uh, some hand sanitizer over here on my side. All right, that I is... really don't want your cold, so keep it in <laughs> your direction. That is the voice of Jenny Chadwick, first Ward City Councilwoman here in the city of Columbia, Missouri. And uh, she is on board to talk about uh, legislation. She wants to ban the e-cig uh, in public property. Uh, I assume that means bars, restaurants, taverns, th things like that. To add it to our indoor air policy. Which I think is wrong to begin with. And uh, wait a minute, I'm getting this. Okay, talk again. I said to add it to our indoor air policy. That's as hot as I can make that microphone, Brian. All right. Um, you also want to raise the age uh, to purchase tobacco to 21. Correct. Yeah, you know the argument you're going to hear this. I know you know this argument. Well, let's hear it. The argument you're going to hear is, you mean to tell me that some 19-year-old that we can send to the Middle East to die in some third world country can't buy a pack of cigarettes in Colombia? Yes, that is an argument that we will definitely hear. Yes, and how would you respond to that? Well, there's a lot of ways to respond to that, Gary. Um, you know, we regulate a lot of things to the age of 21, and that's what we're considering regulating tobacco to. We know that tobacco is the leading cause of preventable death in the nation, killing about 400,000 people a year. Um, Colombia has about a 20% prevalence rate of smoking, and so that means about 20,000 Colombians are smoking, and smoking kills one out of every three individuals. So that's going to kill about 7,000 people from smoking-related deaths. It kills them when? At the age of 90 or at the age of 50? That's always undecided. <laughs> oh, so that's, that, that number it, may not have very much impact no, when you break I that down. They, uh, but let's, let's go on to, your, uh, to the ESIG. First sure, of, no, we were still hitting the 19 and why can they go to war right, and well, not? Yeah, why, why would you tell somebody who, who can die for your country? Why also would you send people who are 20 years old out of town to buy their cigarettes and bring them back, why would you create a black market for those cigarettes on top of everything else? Sure. So we're talking about all the things that we do regulate at 21 versus um, what we regulate at 18. So, yes, you can fight for our country, and we have a country that we fight for freedom in our country, not a country that we fight to make sure that somebody has a product that is deadly to them. Yeah, but if, I'm, so if you're fighting for my... At the age of 21, we If you're fighting for alcohol, my freedom, I should be able to buy cigarettes. Why can't we buy alcohol at 21? Well, you should 18? be able to. Okay, so then we can debate a whole lot of public health issues. We can. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and so we, can also, we, we can... know that tobacco is more harmful than alcohol. So why would we want to regulate it any less? More harmful than alcohol? Absolutely. Is it more harmful than obesity? Is it, it like the most it harmful the thing most in the country? Harm, yes, that's what I'm saying. It Are you not listening? I'm it listening is the to most you. preventable, highest cause of death in the nation. So when you've tilted to that windmill enough, what's the next windmill you're going to tilt at? Will you go after obesity? Well, Will we you say, should as a country go after obesity. So and I we think should we regulate. Are making that statement. So we should regulate. What should we regulate for people under uh, 21? Carbohydrates or fat? What would you suggest? I would suggest we let people live their own lives, that we let them be responsible and accountable for their own behavior, and that we not tell private property owners in particular that we will dictate to them by force what they can do on their own property. Is that your phone or mine? Is that your advocate? Oh, that's Tracy Kennedy. She was um, from Tobacco Free Columbia. I was oh. going to call in. Um, but she can't make it, can she? Oh, she could have made it. I just didn't know if we wanted both of us here. Can you stay past 11? Um, no, I have a meeting with Mike Mathis. Oh, can she call in? Oh, because, sure, she can. Because this whole idea about the e-cigarette is nonsense. You can't even make a credible case for secondhand smoke much less the e-cigarette. Have you read recent data? Oh, yeah. You tell me what piece of data you got, and I'll tell you the truth. The American um, Journal of Public Health published two studies in August that um, provide information that says that there is toxic chemicals that are expelled by the e-cigarettes. All right. Do you know anything about toxicology? You know, no, I'm not a toxicologist. Oh, well. Are you a toxicologist? I do know the number one rule of toxicology, which is you the do. dose makes the poison. And that's what your 
arguing here. And e-cigarettes are unregulated, so we unregulate the dose. We heard at the Board of Health meeting the other day from the e-cigarette advocate that it is because the product is different, depending on what it is, then it, you know, we can't regulate it. Some aren't quite as good. So we can give them a mechanism and some of them expel more of the chemicals than others because it's a not reg- an unregulated product. Tell me how, I mean, the whole idea of this is nonsense. Let, let me just explain. I let love me, your nonsense. All right, well, let me explain. What do you think is safer, an e-cigarette or a regular cigarette? You know, there's no research to show um, that e-cigarettes are not unsafe. You're saying that, which is safer? Which do you suspect? They both are nicotine delivery systems. Nicotine is not a carcinogen, so we're not worried about that. Most of them are water or glycerin based. So tell me which one you think is most dangerous, a regular cigarette or an e-cigarette? You know, I don't have that research in front of me. Oh, that's a that's a good cop out. Take a guess, though. Well, take a guess at what you think is. You guess. What's your guess? I would guess the e-cigarette is way safe, way safer. Safer. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, in fact, you- most of the chemicals that are in the e-cigarette are in the. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Johnson and Johnson's products for uh, vapor uh, injection of, of uh, nicotine. But if I have to stand outside to smoke, why would I use the e-cigarette if I have to stand outside to vape? Why should I quit when I can keep? You know, if I still have to go outside. All right, I, I'm up against the clock. Fox News coming up. Gary Nolan, Zimmer Radio Network. This is the Gary Nolan Show. Oh, he's got the ball. Go, go, go. no, 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 you're going, you're going no. the wrong way. What are you Come doing? On. Why do they even play that kid? Must be the coach's son. Hey, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Glad to be with you. It is uh, seven minutes after the hour. I am frankly kind of excited. Um, we had uh, Ginny Chadwick on, first ward uh, city councilwoman. Very nice gal, I thought. Uh, she didn't want to listen to any argument. Uh, she wouldn't even... I offered her... I was going to give her a book um, that she could read, and she wasn't interested in answering any questions. Uh, she just wanted to, you know, go off and not be confused by any facts. But she did get Tracy Kennedy, who is uh, one of the anti-smoking, um, I, would, I would call extremists, to come on the program. She's, uh, I'm sure, an advocate of, of smoking bans and the like. So I welcome Tracy on the program. Tracy Kennedy, welcome. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for welcoming me. I hope you don't uh, throw the book at me like you did at Councilwoman Chadwick, though. I didn't throw the book at her. I tried to, oh, okay. to discuss things with her, but she didn't want to hear anything. Uh, okay. uh, you, you're, they're attacking the e-cigarette as though it's the same as a regular cigarette. And you don't want it in, in bars and restaurants. And I'm saying, look, you can't even make the case for secondhand smoke. How are you going to make the case for the for the e-cigarette? It's just, it's, it's impossible. Yeah, I think, well, are you an e-cigarette user? I just out of curiosity. Oh, as a matter of fact, I am. Okay. But I, I, also, I was just curious. And I also smoke. But you know, okay, so you're, but, a, you're a dual user. Yeah, but I managed to, to cut back considerably. And friends of mine, like my producer, managed to quit entirely. Would you, now, which one do you think is more dangerous? The regular cigarette or the vapor? Sure. So I think I think you're the perfect example of how we have to weigh the harm and the benefit. You of didn't the you didn't answer my question, and I'm wondering. I, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Just a simple a simple answer is is all we need. Which one safer, do you th- Which safer. one do you think is safer, the e cig or the regular cigarette? You know, I think you can maybe say safer but I don't think you can say safe with any kind of confidence. Well, you can't say safe about coffee either. It's got an addictive quality to it, just like nicotine, caffeine. It's got over a 1,000 chemicals in it, just like well, like smoking. Uh, but I think we could say it's safe. I don't think you can say it's safe. I would I would argue with that. And when you, when you look at the impact that uh, nicotine has on your neural pathways, it acts very differently than caffeine. And I understand they're both have addictive properties. I, I think that's the same, but the impact on, on your neurochemistry is not the same. Nicotine same. is not a carcinogen. No, it's not. And okay. in fact, it's been shown to actually help with Alzheimer's patients. Hmm? So, I mean, we can find good things about nicotine, but right. the fact is, if the, but the fact is, that if I own a bar or a restaurant, mm-hmm. and I or or a carpet store for that matter, and I want to let people vape, 
It's my property. I should I should allow that. If you don't so like it, don't come in. Your issue is that it should be a, a business owner's decision. Right. That, so your issue isn't really even about the e-cigarette. It's more about a business owner. Well, right. it's both. I think the whole argument about the e-cigarette is nonsense, but, I, but I'm even more upset that you're willing to use force to take away somebody's private property rights. But if your business is open to the public... Is it private property? Yes. I, mean, I understand you own it, but yes. you're opening your business to the public. And so if you allow someone to use a product that potentially has harmful chemical properties. Don't come in. And you're exposing it. So, so would you recommend then maybe posting a sign that says, if you enter, you could be exposed to harmful chemicals? No, I wouldn't say it that way. I would say oh, we allow, okay. you know, first off, I don't think you should force them to put up a sign either. You walk into a place that allows smoking, you know it in a fraction of a second. But if you were to, if I were to give at all, if I were to compromise at all on private property rights, I would say mm -hmm. you put up a sign in the door that says we allow smoking and vape and vaping. What about employee health, though? Employees aren't compelled to work for me. A job is a privilege, not a right. Mm, interesting. And I own a tavern in Ohio, and I know what the smoking ban has done to the business. So let those places that want to do it. Let those places that don't not yeah you know i i appreciate your your concern and and i don't see this as a business rights issue for me it's, it is about health it, it is a health issue it's, it's a health issue you know, but you can't get past it's my private property it's my bar opening it it's one thing if you want to use them in your private residence no That's it's my residence it's my building tracy you don't have to come in you can go down the street and and and, and spend money at the at the bar down the street or the restaurant down the street, but yeah. it's my private property. You're not compelled to come in. You're only invited to come in. Okay, yeah. So so is it like a membership? You you have to have an invitation to come in. No, if you want to come in, you come in. If you don't, you oh. don't. It's just like if I go into a bar or a restaurant and I don't like their food or their prices or the music or the atmosphere, I go someplace else. So do you, at your bar, do you uh, adhere to regulatory codes like fire exits and food preparation, or are those also ridiculous? They are ridiculous. I want to make sure that my customers are happy with their service, that I don't make them sick, and that they mm -hmm. have choices. And so I do what I do in order to stay in business. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I don't poison my customers with dirty glasses, and I use Steramine to make sure that they're, they're clean. That's why I cook the meat thoroughly. And they right. have a choice. If they don't like the food or whatever, they can go someplace else. And if they don't like the smoking, they can go someplace else. Well, it's, it's great that you're a, an altruistic business owner, and I, I hope that we can anticipate that all business owners are as altruistic as you. But, you know, that's not something we can guarantee. So that's why we have, we have laws to protect that public safety to make sure that you can, you can go to a public place somewhere open to the public and you can enter and know that you're not going to have to be exposed to harmful chemicals. Oh, Tracy, I mean, the I, laws that you're, even the laws that you're referring to are laws that customers wouldn't know about. For instance, that I use Steramine. You might write a law that says I have to use Steramine to clean the glasses because customers would have no way of knowing that. But if it comes to smoking, customers would know that right away. Secondly, if secondhand smoke, if you can't even make a compelling argument for secondhand smoke, you certainly can't make one for vaping. Oh, you don't think that, so you don't think the secondhand smoke argument is... I know it's not true. Either. I absolutely know it's not true. And I've... Are you a, you're a, because you're, of your scientific background? Hey, look, if you, if you look me up, you'll find that I'm the go-to guy when they put John Banzaff on the air or any of the other anti-tobacco extremists, and you'll find that I beat them every time. And if you want to go down that road, I'll take you apart on this because secondhand smoke is not a carcinogen. It doesn't cause cancer. It doesn't raise heart attack rates. And bans don't reverse it. So you would be willing to sit in a room with secondhand smoke exposure and just, you know, eight hours, ten hours a day. You work a lot. I'm sure you're a hard worker and just have that exposure and you, you don't feel it would impact your health 
whatsoever. Absolutely, because I know the impact of secondhand smoke. I know that the dose makes the poison, and I know that, well, it smells awful, and I would agree to that. It doesn't cause heart attacks or cancer. I know that a federal court judge named Osteen, who is an anti-tobacco judge, said the EPA study was junk science. It was cherry-picked data. I know that the Congressional uh, uh, Research Service looked at it and said the same thing about secondhand smoke. I know all the faults on all the studies. Uh, I know that the, they changed the confidence level uh, at the EPA when they made their study. You want to bring it up. Go for it. Yeah, you know, if I, I don't know. The thing is, I have done the research, and I have looked through all of those studies. I mean, you're you're challenging literally thousands of peer-reviewed data. Yes, a lot of them are peer-reviewed in economics. Over 50 years, 50 years of data. You are willing to challenge 50 years worth of data. I am because there is an equal amount of data on the other side. And I also know who funds your data. And I also know, for who instance, the that the largest... talking about, though? Uh, does it matter? The, uh, you want to tell me that the uh, tobacco companies are funding some of this data? I'll tell you that the very largest study done on secondhand smoke was done for the American Cancer Society. And they, they stopped their funding at the last minute. Why? Because it turned out that it was indicating secondhand smoke was not a, the dangerous carcinogen that uh, everybody is making it out to be. And I have some other studies here, some very recent studies here, uh, describing uh, uh, secondhand smoke from a cancer uh, organization I, here. I just have to tell you, Gary, I think you're, uh, I think you're, you're making yourself sound like an extremist. Because, Am I? Yes, because the majority of people understand that secondhand smoke is dangerous. The majority of Missourians understand that. And so... It's interesting you label me as an extremist right. because I would say All right, you're quite extreme. Let's, you. let's try some facts here. Um, is there a safe level of exposure for secondhand smoke? No. There's not. No. Are you familiar with ricin? Do you know what ricin yes. is? Yes. Pretty deadly, isn't it? Yes. Do you know there's a safe level of exposure for ricin? Well, I do you yes. know? Are you familiar with arsenic? Are you familiar with arsenic? Yes. Do you know that there's a safe level of exposure for arsenic? This is a great point that you bring up. I'm glad you brought this up. I'm glad you brought this up. This is something I've heard from e-cigarette advocates, e-cigarette users, is that the chemicals included in e-cigarettes are safe. They're considered safe by the FDA. The thing is, is without regulation, when you heat these elements in certain amounts, they they can produce carcinogenic levels. So that. That's my concern is are there products included in secondhand smoke and and in cigarettes and in e-cigarettes that in some cases are safe? Yes. But when you add combustion, when you add heating, when you add certain amounts, that's when you get your harmful levels. Yes. So there is a safe level of exposure for secondhand smoke? That's not what I said. I well, said I'm just trying to find safe. out how. No, no yeah, no. I'm, I'm just, just trying to find out why it is that you can't tell me, you can't admit that there is a safe level of exposure for secondhand smoke. Well, won't, I won't admit that because what I said is there may be a safe level of exposure to one component, any one component of secondhand smoke or cigarettes or e cigarettes. But when you add the process of combustion, when you breathe in the... the well, that's, a, that's the what mixture. secondhand smoke is. It is combustion. You know that John Banzaf tried to get OSHA. You're familiar with OSHA, aren't you? I am, You yes. know what they do, right? I do, yeah. They tell people that, that, you know, you're on the job and you're working around these dangerous chemicals and we can't, uh, we can't let you do that. They're the ones that make sure that nobody's exposed to dangerous chemicals. He's tried to sue OSHA to get them to ban smoking in the workforce, in the workplace, because the secondhand smoke was so dangerous. And do you know what they said? Yes, I know what they said, yes. What, what did they say? OSHA d- does not regulate, currently regulate smoking in the workplace. Do you know they why do they don't do it? Time. Because according to the letter that I'm reading... Because they don't think it's possible for the mm-hmm. chemicals in secondhand smoke to raise to the level of exposure that violates any PEL. Those are permissible mm-hmm. exposure limits. Yes. 
Well, just just real quick, I know that this argument is is just enthralling and very fun for both of us. I, you know, I can appreciate we have a difference of opinion. I can appreciate that. I just I just want to, you know, as one final question, I I wonder what you think is the potential harm of exposure to nicotine for young people. Do you see any, you know, as being a, a current tobacco user, you know, if you could go back, would you have picked up the habit when you were a teenager or well, whatever? Well, as it started? turns out, as it turns out, smoking among kids is going down uh, okay. and and uh, they're they're not using the e-cigarette as a um, as a uh, uh, gateway but I do have a study here from the Journal of the National Cancer Institute the article describes mm -hmm. a large prospective study that confirmed a strong association between cigarette smoking and lung cancer but found no link between the disease and secondhand smoke the study mm -hmm. tracked more than 76,000 women 901 of whom eventually develop lung cancer. Although the incidence of... I, I was asking about impact on youth. So I was just curious if... And I was asking about your own experience. If you, Do you feel there's any benefit to trying to keep youth from starting an addiction to nicotine? I don't think it would be any of your business or the government's business or my business for that matter, to dictate what youth do. I think it's up to the parents. But, about, but, a, your, but your argument is based on a false premise. Your premise is not. that the e-cigarette is somehow a gateway to smoking. And it, it's not. There, there is research to show that nicotine works as a primer in your brain. If you look at the neurotoxicity. If you look at the numbers. An impact. If you look at the numbers, Tracy, you find that it is not a gateway. Two studies, just, one of them done here, one of them done in Europe. The one in, uh, here was, uh, I believe, the largest study ever done on young kids and, uh, and uh, e-cigarettes. And it, it, based on the numbers, they're not going to smoking. And they're not starting house fires. Well, they're well not, just like you said, you have data that shows that I would have data to the contrary. But, again, the data on e-cigarettes is very preliminary. I will, I will tell you that. It is very preliminary. So don't ban it. And don't ban it on my private property. Ban it on your private property. Okay, but here's my question. Here's my question. As a taxpayer, you're you're saying that, you know, the that this is junk science. I, I hear your talking points, but what I don't understand then is how taxpayers are having to foot the burden caused by tobacco related death and disease. Well and it's interesting you bring that up because I happen to know of several studies, both in Europe and the Congressional Research Service, that indicates that when smokers get cancer, they only use their health care earlier. They don't use more of it. And that, in <laughs> fact, diseases of old age take up more money than lung cancer. So if somebody mm -hmm. gets Alzheimer's and they, they get uh, uh, medical attention, that may last for 15 years. On average, a smoker, five. Well, I, um, again, I thank you for your time this morning. I wish we could go on all day. I, I wish I, we I... could, too. Tracy, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, have a great day. Thanks, you, too. Gary. Take care. Bye. Gary Nolan Show, Zimmer, Radio Network. I wish I had more time. We did this extemporaneously. Um, we called the uh, day before yesterday to get uh, Jenny Chadwick on. Then I got sick and couldn't do the show. And then, uh, surprise, we got them today. Thank God. I, I'm grateful to both of them for showing up. I'm not saying that, but I didn't plan on this debate. But let me give you some, some uh, facts, and so we'll go to the phones. You can get more formaldehyde out of your carpeting than you get out of secondhand smoke. The uh, American Cancer Society funded the largest study on secondhand smoke. And when it was almost, when they were almost finished, they got the preliminary on it, uh, on the study, and it had them, it covered the most people. And they realized, and it was coming to the conclusion there was no correlation between secondhand smoke and heart disease or cancer. They cut, they cut their funding. So they went to, uh, they went to the tobacco companies for the last 10%. And then they said, well, we can't, we have to ignore that whole study because it was done by you know, funded by with tobacco money. Never mind that 90% of it was funded by the American Cancer Society. The Congressional Research Service and a federal judge both said that it was junk science, secondhand smoke. If secondhand smoke is junk science, certainly vaping is safe. And it is, it, here's what it is. Because you can get an e-cigarette that's nothing but water. You can get them so that there's just steam, so that a smoker can... 
uh, feel have the feel of a cigarette and uh, get to take a hit on it, get a little bit of a hit from the steam. They don't make it. They they want them banned because they look like cigarettes. In the long run, they will fail. And by the way, I would suggest our last guest is probably making a living doing this. I don't. I'm not paid. Let me go to the phones. There's so much more I could tell you, but it just... It, let me go to the phones here. Uh, Tim, it's Frost Your Buns Friday. Welcome. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. Oh, good morning. Well, you drew the cuckoos from the cuckoo nest today, didn't you? <laughs> I don't know. A uh, couple of things I would want to say. Uh, the first guy, the first gentleman about the seatbelts and all that stuff... There's still a statistic out there that says even people wearing seatbelts, they're killed in car wrecks. So seatbelts haven't saved lives. Stay out of the car. That's my private domain. You want to give people tickets for having their lights on bright and not using their turn signals when they're driving, that's communicating with another driver. Do that. That'll save some lives. This lady here talking about this now, I was hoping you'd give me a chance to talk to her. You got 30 seconds, and then I'm out of clock. Okay, I'm a non-smoker, don't like it, benefit from all that stuff. 50 years of science. 50 years of science was also telling people that a woman being raped could abort the baby naturally. That was 50 years of science. 50 years of science so, said you can't eat fat either. Exactly. So her, she, she's way wrong on it. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm a non-smoker, don't like it, but I don't think that the government should be able to come in and tell somebody what to do on their personal property. I have a right to choose not to go to that restaurant. Absolutely right. All right, Tim, thank you for the call. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. Yeah, now they're saying you can eat fat. Fat's not the problem. It's the carbohydrates that they've been telling you to eat for 50 years, including the American Heart Association. Let people make up their own minds. Don't use force. Gary Nolan, Zimmer Radio Network. This is the Gary Nolan Show. Now, Eagle Eye Weather on Hot Talk and Breaking News, 93.9, The Eagle. Your ABC 17 storm track weather for today, partly to mostly sunny, high of 79 for tonight. We'll see a few clouds overnight, low of 64, and for tomorrow, partly cloudy chance. We could see some storms late, high of 82. Weather is brought to you by Steve's Pest Control. The fall invasion is here. Call Steve and the pros at Steve's Pest Control today to stop the fall pest from invading your home. Call or go online at Steve'sPestControl.com. Hot Talk, 93.9, The Eagle. News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. The main man behind Scotland's campaign for independence has resigned as head of the government there and as leader of the Scottish National Party after a vote to split off from Great Britain fails. It has been the privilege of my life to serve as First Minister. Yesterday's referendum had about 55% of voters preferring to stay with England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. President Obama, in a statement, says he welcomes the decision. A Chinese e-commerce company makes a splash on Wall Street. Alibaba yesterday priced at $68 a share at the top of the range. This means they raised $21.8 billion. The company now valued at $167.6 billion. This company is just massive. Their gross merchandise volume is 25% more than Amazon and eBay combined. Fox Business Network's JoLynn Kent at the Stock Exchange. Fox News, we report. You decide. When you think about investing, consider options that line up with your beliefs. Come to a no-obligation educational presentation on September 30th at 6 p.m. This event, brought to you by Fidelity Financial Services and presented by John Sider of Calvert Investments, will be held at Shakespeare's South. I'm Mike McQuistian of Fidelity Financial Services. Call 875-8005 to reserve your seat. Securities and investment advisory services offered through ING Financial Partners, member SIPC. Fidelity Financial Services, LLC, is not a subsidiary of nor controlled by ING Financial Partners. This seminar is funded in part by Calvert Investments, which is not affiliated with ING Financial Partners. I need to control internet usage in my office. Do you want to pay a fee for every user? No. Do you want to pay extra to protect remote users? No. How about a product that's difficult to install and use? No. Offshore automated phone tree support okay? No. Then yes, we can help. The Barracuda Web Filter. Content filtering, application control, and malware protection with no per-user fees. Available as a hardware appliance, virtual appliance, or as a cloud service. And live humans to answer your calls. Try Barracuda Web Filter free. Go to barracuda.com slash yes. Because Mike switched to Geico and saved hundreds of dollars on car insurance, his money clip wants to shake his hand firmly for a solid three seconds. But it can't. Fact is, most money clips don't have hands to shake with. Switch to Geico, and every time you notice the extra cash, you'll know your money clip wants to give you a firm handshake. But remember, it can't. 
It doesn't have hands. It is, however, happy that you're saving money. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Missouri Net News. Good morning. I'm Mike Lear reporting. The state Supreme Court has set an execution date for convicted murderer Mark Christensen. He is scheduled to die by lethal injection early the morning of October 29th at the prison in Bonterre. Christensen, 35, was sentenced to death in 1999 for the murders of Susan Brock and her children, 9-year-old Kyle and 12-year-old Adrian, at the Brock's home near Vichy. Christensen had raped Susan Brock, he and his cousin Jesse Carter, then forced her and her children into her vehicle and drove to her neighbor's pond. There, Christensen cut her throat and her son's throat before holding the boy in the pond until he drowned. He then suffocated her daughter and pushed her body into the pond, finally throwing Susan into the pond on top of her children where she drowned. Both men were found guilty of three counts of first-degree murder. Jesse Carter is serving life in prison without possibility of parole for his role in the murders. And that's news on Missouri Net. For more, find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and MissouriNet.com. Did you know that all young men must register with the Selective Service System within 30 days of their 18th birthday? It's a good thing to know because those who don't register aren't eligible for student aid, federal jobs, or job training programs. They also can't obtain a driver's license in most states. But another good thing to know is how simple it is to register. Just visit sss.gov on your computer or smartphone. It only takes about 30 seconds. It's quick, it's easy, it's the law. When every moment matters and a life is saved, when someone gives blood, when a hand reaches out, that moment when heartbreak turns to hope, you're there through the American Red Cross. Down the street, across the country, around the world, you help save the day, every day. Your support truly matters. You can help today. Visit redcross.org. Hot talk, breaking news with what matters to you. 93.9 The Eagle. Thirty-five minutes after the hour. Glad to have you with us. Glad to be with you. You know, if I did a little homework, went back and refreshed and had the statistics uh, right on the tip of my tongue, it would have been uh, even better. I, I just didn't have time to to go refer. There is a group, a government study, uh, where they, they took a room like 10 by 12 by 8 feet with no windows and doors and estimated how many people would have to be smoking in that room in order to violate, you know, to get the, the dangerous chemicals in secondhand smoke, to, uh, to violate OSHA's Pels. And it was like half a million cigarettes at one time in there. It, it, you wouldn't have enough room for oxygen. Uh, Brian, I can't read Facebook. This thing It's what, still messing up, huh? Yeah, what do you got in there? What do you, what, what do you got? What do you have in there? I'm sorry. Just a couple of uh, things, nothing uh, pressing. Well, tell me. Because I can't... Well, uh, hang on. All right. While you're doing that, I'm going to go to the phones. Uh, let me get Alan in the, on the line. Alan, welcome. Glad to have you on the Gary Nolan Show. How are you? <laughs> Gary, good. I hope you're feeling better, man. Um, yeah, Tracy was pretty frustrated. You know, I sit there and I listen to her, and, and, of course, this is nothing new to you, but she sat there and she talked about, you know, in the restaurant and bar business and, and having the, the, the different regulations and stuff and how those guarantee... They don't guarantee anything. If you happen to be in there while the inspector happens to be in there, then, yeah, there's a pretty good chance that they're not doing anything they're not supposed to do. But any other time, they could be doing whatever the hell they want. I mean, and it's like you said, that's not in your best interest as a business owner. So you're going to do what you can to make sure those things aren't happening. Um, yeah, but not only, you know, yeah. one more thing, and, and this, I tried to make this point to her. You come into my bar, you don't know that I use Steramine. You have no, no way of all. knowing that. But you do know if there's cigarette smoke... Right. So, you know, writing a regulation, you know, you have to have a sign. You don't even need to sign the door. You hit the door, you crack it open a little bit, and you can smell the cigarette smoke. Too. Well, I'm not going in there. Exactly. 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 The, um, uh, the other thing she was talking about when she was talking about the, the, the threat and the danger to children and all this other stuff, uh, it's the same thing as with the guns and everything. Why aren't you out trying to ban bicycles? Uh, soccer and the other stuff, uh, the stairs in schools, because there's many more people that, that die from drowning, from falling down stairs and other stuff than they do from guns or cigarette smoke or anything else. So why aren't you going after those things that are really killing the kids? 
you know? Yeah, they make if it you're sound... you about it, if that's your purpose, go after it. Yeah, you... There, you know, and, and if suppose they were successful, Alan, at, at getting everybody to quit smoking. Suppose they eliminated it because it's the number one killer. What's the next number one killer then? The number two killer now will be the number one killer then. Are they going to go after fat people? Yeah. How, how can we possibly let people ride bikes, climb mountains, uh, parasail, you know, anything? Nobody under the age there's of 21... Nobody under the age of 21 should be allowed to go to McDonald's and order a quarter pounder with fries. Exactly. It's, it's silly. It's ridiculous. Alan, thank Gary, you. Before I get off, I, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, you do your uh, uh, dinner at uh, CC's. Uh, not, yeah, CC. Um, how about doing another one of those on Tuesday, October 14th? Tuesday, October 14th? Yep. I, that's, I, the day they're gonna, that's the day they're going to have Unfair uh, Exposing the IRS, the movie, at the Goodrich Forum 8. Uh, at 7 p.m. I think that'd be great, man, to do the... Hold it, uh, uh, hold it, hold it. Hold it. What, sounds, Brian, what? That what, sounds what? like a PSA trying to get free advertisement on board. You mean about about the fair tax thing? Yeah, it sounds like he's trying to sneak trying one Trying to through. let people know that there's a movie out that on tells October you all 14th. the... Uh, when? On October 14th, I think he said, but yeah, Alan. Yeah, I, 7 p.m. at the yeah. Goodrich Forum 8. Yeah. And it's, and it's going to be uh, about the Internal Revenue Service? Uh, about the, uh, yeah, exposing the IRS. Yeah, we're not going to be able to help you with that, Alan. But I can forward this call to the sales department. Would that help you well, out? On the 14th. Brian, wait a I'm minute. Actually, I might I'm actually more concerned about the dinner. I might want to go to this. I might want to go to this. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, so. tell, I'll tell you what I'll do, Alan. Hold on a second. This is gonna Give me the date on that again because I don't have a pen in front of me now. I've just okay. given it. Tuesday, October 14th. Tuesday, October 14th. At what time? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Now. Here's yeah, what we could do. Hopefully they could get us in and get us out or maybe even open early like they did uh, for you before. Well, here's what we could do. We could get enough people. I could talk to Scott. Maybe we could meet at 5 o'clock. We'll see if they'll give us that side room, mm -hmm. uh, meet for dinner, and then I'll go across the street to the theater. Sure. And then drinks afterwards. <laughs> you know, i got to get up at a dark 30 in the morning. I'm up at 4 or 4.30 in the morning. I, I can't no, be out drinking right. Diet Coke with you guys. You can drink something healthy. You can have juice at night. All right, Alan. Let me let me see what I can put together, but I'll have to do this quickly. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, you. buddy. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. What do you got on Facebook? Because I'm seeing that I'm getting yeah, all kinds of notices. There's a couple. Uh, get stupid off, please. I'm, a, I'm thinking that that was either the uh, seat or the uh, breathalyzer <laughs> from way back when. And then uh, Dwayne says, hell, bleach is more harmful than smoking. Let's ban bleach, too. It's a couple. And uh -huh. there, yeah, there's a bunch of them coming in. I can't hardly keep uh, up. I got one over here, but this isn't in the, the... I can't read this in the activity thing. It just it seizes up. Ouch, Gary, you should have a disclaimer when someone tries to, de to debate you on e-cigs and secondhand smoke. It was like watching a white belt attempt to beat up a level 10 black belt. Lance, I love it. The debate was like poetry. Secondhand smoke is so ridiculous, and hearing that debate was music to my ears. Good job. Uh, John Bird, John says, uh, Gary, you should be ashamed of yourself beating that poor lady Tracy like that. Great job. All right.